Hello. In this video, we will be discussing the concept of conjugation. Conjugation is essentially the stability, stabilizing of a molecule by delocalizing the electrons so that the electrons aren't held on a specific atom but are spread out over several atoms. Conjugation can stabilize molecules, can also stabilize ions, both positive and negative, and free radicals. We've already seen some of that in organic chemistry. We'll make it a little bit more formal in this chapter, as well as discussing some of the interesting reactions that happen on conjugated systems. But first, let's talk about what kinds of things can be conjugated and how would you recognize conjugation. Well, let's start with uh, double bonds. Um, that's where we're mostly going to be dealing uh, with in this chapter is dienes, two double bonds that are conjugated with each other. Now, are all dienes conjugated? No. If you have the situation of double, single, double, that kind of diene is called conjugated. And this, we'll see why in a few minutes. But there are a couple of other kinds of dienes that we won't be dealing with in this chapter because they're not conjugated. One is simply having at least one saturated carbon in between double bonds. Now this represents at least one carbon, but it could be more than one. So you have double, single, single, double. Those are known as isolated dienes because the two double bonds are isolated from each other. They don't communicate with each other. Each one acts as a regular alkene double bond. And then the third kind is the kind where you have two double bonds sharing a, an individual carbon. So you have double-double, no single bonds in between. Those are known as cumulated dienes. And they're a very interesting category of compounds in and of themselves, but we won't be dealing with them in this chapter because they're not conjugated. What other kinds of materials can be conjugated besides dienes? Well, any double carbon-carbon double bond in which something special is going on at the carbon next door, for example, a positive charge. We've already seen those kinds of uh, positive charges, and we'll talk a lot more about them in this chapter. This would be a conjugated cation, specifically allylic meaning the positive charge is directly attached to the double bond, not on the carbon of the double bond, but on the carbon next to it. And we know that that's called an allylic carbon when it's next to a double bond. The reason this is called conjugated is because we can draw another resonance structure for it. In which the positive charge is on the third carbon away and the double bond moves to take its place. So these are resonance structures. And the fact that you can draw more than one resonance structure for that kind of positive charge means that it's more stable than other kinds of positive charges. And it turns out allylic carbocations are more stable even than tertiary carbocations, that is, tertiary ones that are not conjugated. So you can have cations that are conjugated. You can have anions that are conjugated. That would be an allylic carbanion, and you can draw another resonance structure for that. In which the negative charge moves down to the third carbon away, and the double bond shifts. So much like allylic carbocations, you can have allylic carbanions as well. And for that matter, free radicals. So the third member of this set of molecules, and by the way, these would be in the category of intermediates and mechanisms, not stable molecules. So carbocations, carbanions, and free radicals generally are not found stably, but found in mechanisms. And of course, a free radical at this carbon, again, you can draw a resonance structure the lone electron, not positive or negative, 
moves from this carbon to this carbon and shifts the double bond down. Don't forget, resonant structures are both, or even if there's more than one, more than two, they are both at the same time. It's not going back and forth, it's both at the same time, which means that this bond and this bond are both sort of double bonds, sort of single bonds. This carbon has some of the odd electron density, and this carbon has some of the odd electron density, so it's both at the same time. So, again, just to review, carbanions, carbocations, and radicals, if they're allylic, are conjugated and they're more stable than others of their type would be. But then we also have lone pairs that are not on carbon. For example, if you have a halogen, This would be a vinylic halogen because the bromine chlorine or iodine is directly attached to a double bond. So this is a vinyl group or a vinylic group. Can you draw another resonance structure for that? Absolutely. Now we're going to have to introduce some formal charges. Positive on the halogen, negative on the carbon. But the fact and so, of those two resonance structures, this is by far the more important of the two resonance structures. Notice I said more important, not more stable. The reason we can't say this is more stable is because it's not a different molecule. These are both um, representations of the same molecule. But of those two representations, this is the more important one because it doesn't have any formal charge. Both of them, the octet will be satisfied but this one has charge separation and it's always better not to have charge separation if you can help it. But in any case, what this represents is the fact that halogens directly attached to double bonds are more stable than other alkyl halides would be. And in fact, they're not even really considered to be alkyl halides, they're considered to be vinylic halides, which do different kinds of reactions than alkyl halides do. And there's a reason, it's because you can draw another resonance structure for it. This bond, which appears to be a double bond in the molecule, is actually somewhat um, lengthened out, in other words, more like a single bond, and again, that's because of the other resonance structure. Again, the double bonds on this halogen are considered to be conjugated with that double bond. A very similar situation arises when we have an oxygen directly attached to a double bond. And you can draw a resonance structure for that. you have a positive charge on the oxygen and a negative charge on the carbon because one of these pairs can move into there and make a double bond and that pair moves out onto the carbon to make that a carbanion type carbon, negative. Again, pair of electrons on the oxygen conjugated with the double bond because you can draw more resonance structures for it. And again, we will, if we haven't already seen examples of that kind of resonance, but there's yet another kind that we haven't yet talked about uh, today, although you have seen this before, and you may not have recognized it, but in all of those mechanisms involving acid catalysts of esterification and all the various ramifications of that, and all those um, molecules from aldehydes and ketones that we call hydrates and hemiacetals and acetals, we saw molecules in which you have a positive charge on oxygen of that type, and that may be an R group or it may be a hydrogen, I've drawn it with a hydrogen here, but we can draw another resonance structure for that as well, in which one of these pairs of electrons moves up onto the oxygen to satisfy the positive charge, and that leaves that carbon positive does that look familiar? It should. We've seen that kind of resonance structure many times before. In fact, I refer to that as an oxocarbocation because in one resonance structure the positive charge is on the oxygen, in the other resonance structure it's on a carbon. What we can say is that this positive charge is conjugated with the lone pairs on the oxygen. So again, this represents a sort of conjugation because you can draw resonance structures for it. I think you've gotten the idea in all these examples I've given you that conjugation and resonance are 
intimately tied up with each other. They essentially represent the same thing. Conjugation represents the molecule itself. Resonance represents the two structures that you can draw for it. And so that basically summarizes what we mean by conjugation. In a future video, we will talk about a little bit more detail about the orbitals and the hybridization of the atoms that are involved, as well as uh, further resonance structures. And we'll talk about both atomic orbitals and molecular orbitals as it has to do with conjugation. Thank you for your attention.